tipped in the air and knocked away. KU's got to win it. <laughs> Blah, big time two-hand slam by Hunter Dickinson. Kansas is the 2023 WNIT champions. This is the Jayhawker Podcast, presented by the University of Kansas Health System. Here we are with another Jayhawker Podcast, brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System, Xfinity, Black and & Veatch, and we are on location at one of the coolest places in town, 119th in Metcalf, PXG, Kansas City. Uh, I've got some sticks from out here. You're getting some sticks from out here. It's it's first-class operation, even though you don't have a first-class swing. Yet. 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 Well, because Marcus did such a great job taking care of me, fitting me with my clubs, um, I'm feeling pretty confident about that. He gave me some good compliments on uh, on my swing, and so I'm feeling good. And look, there, there's like a significant synergy between this place and KU. Coach Self's been through. He's got him a, a set of clubs. Hunter's been through. He's got himself a set of clubs. We've had some of our KU golf girls swing by here. You've got one. I mean, Rob Riggle, who is a official ambassador, PSG ambassador. So yeah. it's like great harmony, great synergy between Parsons Extreme Golf. And if you haven't been out here, it's Kansas. awesome. There's three great simulators, great pro shop, putting, everything. It's it's big time. And Kansas City being selected as a as a site for one of these. There's not a lot of these in the country. And uh, take advantage, 119th and uh, Medcalf out here, South Kansas City, PXG, Kansas City. Yep. But on to the Jayhawks. Earlier this week, we took care of little brother. Just... That's 20. more like it, right? That's more like it. Like, we can't have them sweeping us. No, no way. Do you way. know the last time they swept us? 1983. Mm. 82, 83. Think about that. You wasn't born. How about that? So, like in that? order, so I like to poke the bear a little bit, as you know, and I'd like for you to hey, poke the bear. It's a rivalry game. We're allowed to do that. Okay. Good. I want you to do okay. this a little bit because yeah. I don't always want to be the bad guy because <laughs> I have a lot of K State buddies, but. I'm tired of saying that we own this state sign. I, I don't know what state they're talking about or what records they're talking about. Football's got a big lead. Granted, K-State's been the dominant program over the last 15 years. I get it, but it just shows you the domination before. The largest discrepancy in wins and losses in the history of Division One basketball. In the history, not the Big 12 Conference. History of not basketball. between this rival, but in the history of the game. I just wanted to make that a point. 204, 205-ish, however you want to look at it, and 96. So, speaking of sweeps, they would have to sweep us for more than 50 years in a row to get back to even. So, take that. You sign people. <laughs> That's tough to add up. And I wouldn't want to shake your handshake in the handshake line either if I was getting beat down like that on, on the regular. Kind of became a, a narrative last night after the game, a little bit of a flyby. And, and uh, you know, there was some drama when we played in Manhattan. There, whatever happened with their coaches and, you know, they're, you know, I, 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 I guess I am going to kind of poke the bear. There always seems to be drama with that uh, group happened at Iowa State. But isn't that what makes a rivalry great? And, and that's what Bill said in the press conference. He was like, hey, I get it. You know, it's fine. You know, fly by. It's not like he was like, fighting actions or anything. It's just like, all right. A reporter asked him about it. He answered it. He said what he said. And he goes, you know what? It's a rivalry. How it works. Yeah. It's, not, it's not, not, we still got respect. But, uh, you know, gotta, you got to win with class and lose with class. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, so, it's true. You know, the good thing as Kansas fans, people, workers, whatever you want to call us, played well, shot the ball well. Seven days later after laying an egg from the free throw line and losing to BYU, shoot 93% from the free throw line on a lot of free throws. I believe we were 24 of 26, something like that. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. It just shows you how mental free throws are. BYU, we – wasn't like Hunter was a worse player. Or, he just it gets in your head, and you get on a roll, and it's a bad roll. Last night or earlier this week, they got on a roll and they made him. That's how it works. It's a crazy game. Yeah, and the volume to which we shot free throws uh, was well, uh, well noted, and it had nothing to do with poor officiating. But I think that 
our aggressiveness in attacking the basket uh, was probably some of the best that I've seen all year long. And I love it. I think that's where it needs to start. It needs to start inside out. And when I say inside out, not just throwing the ball inside to Hunter, but attacking the basket in transition. Guys getting downhill and putting pressure on the rim, especially when a team like K-State who doesn't have a legitimate rim protector and then allow that to open up the spacing on the floor to which what we saw last night then you can spray the ball around a little bit and now Nick Timberlake is getting catch and open wide threes and then as you see those go in confidence builds and the team gets off to uh, a great start and, and a significant lead. I say it all the time in the broadcast have the ball touch the paint on every possession that's either through dribble penetration or throwing it to Hunter or KJ the defenses collapse, and then you pitch it out to Nick, or you pitch it out to Kevin, or you go to work if they decide not to double. Put the pressure on the defense, because when you just settle for threes, then it's you're easy to guard. And we got to make ourselves more difficult to guard, because we've got to go that extra step, because we don't have as many playmakers. Uh, we have to get the ball in a position to be successful. We're not going to create that position off the bounce. We don't have dynamic yeah. scores like we've had in the past. Yeah. We, we watched the Baylor play on Saturday. They got four or five on the floor at all times. Walter and, and uh, uh, Ray J. Dennis. Langston Love wasn't even playing. They got guys all over the place that can create their own yeah, shots. Yeah, guys that can get their own shots, absolutely. And and one of the things that, that Kansas did extremely well uh, against K-State was create easy baskets because at times we struggle. The times we go on those long, maybe four-minute lulls, uh, we struggle in the half court to find easy baskets. One of the things that helped get us easy baskets last night was Hunter Dickinson and company, particularly Hunter, being dominant on the defensive glass, quick and clean outlets, and guys sprinting the floor. We were plus 20 on the glass to those guys. Two uh, offensive rebounds for Kansas State in the entire game. Two. In Manhattan... The key to that loss for us was the last three possessions yeah, of, no, of regular yeah. off uh, uh, of regulation, second chance points off offensive rebound. They had mm -hmm. six points with under two minutes to go on offensive rebound. One of which Hunter tipped in himself, and the other two were just you know, it just happened sometime. The ball didn't bounce your way, but that was obviously a big thing for us to do last night was to be on the defense for sure, course. and not to get ahead of ourselves because there's still plenty to talk about uh, with the K State. Uh, dominant performance is that's exactly what it's going to take to win on the road at Houston. Uh, one of the ways we were able to neutralize them when we played them in February was to keep them off the glass, a team that gets back, you know, in the upwards of 60% yeah. of their shots back. Crazy. Like, like I like to say, they got one skill player and four goons that are just going to try to maul you on the glass. Goons. Goons. Try to wow. maul you on the glass. And so it's going to be important uh, for the Jayhawks to be able to take that on the road like and, and you and I both know in, in March look you're going to run into a game where you're shooting really well but you're going to run into a game where you struggle to score you're going to run into a game that's that's you know low scoring can we get to a place this upcoming weekend against Houston where we can prove that our defense and our toughness and our grittiness can hit the road and travel when you were playing star to goon where were you? Where, <laughs> where did you fit? To, 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 to goon were ratio. you in the middle? Half goon, half star? Yeah. How would you uh, rate yourself as a goon? Man, you know, I don't even know if I have like specific metrics for that, <laughs> but I, I was really skilled offensively. Uh, True. So, so I think that takes you out of the goon category with touch and was able to score. But, but Top I five goons at Kansas. Yeah, but I love to dunk and I was ferocious on the glass. So like there could be some goon, you know, in there. All goon team, at, all, all, <laughs> goon, all goon team in Kansas. Who's on it? Uh, I'm gonna put Richard Scott. Richard Scott was a goon. He might be number one. He might be number one. Hey, Thomas Robinson was a goon. Uh, uh, Tark Black, Jamari Trailer, Jamari Trailer, just Darnell Jackson, man. D Block. Come on now, look, we got, we it's got. Not a, it's not a derogatory what? term. Hey, this that's it's a compliment. For me, especially for big guys, that is a term of endearment. <laughs> All right, that's not an indictment. That is a term of endearment. Goon with a retired jersey in the most iconic building in America. So 
Again, goon's not a problem. Yeah. I was the opposite of a goon. I was a, yeah, I don't know what I was. All right, which is why you're good at golf. You're better at golf than me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I don't know that's a compliment. But, uh, yeah, Houston brings it. And, and they're going to be pissed off. They came to Lawrence as one of the best teams in the country. And we dismantled them in every facet of the game. We were unbelievably efficient offensively. We shot near 70% from the field. Defensively, we were great. You're correct. They have Jamal Shedd and four guys that aren't super skilled or goons, as you called it. And that's an accurate description. Now, those goons can get 60% of their missed shots back. Jamal Shedd, probably going to be the player of the year in our conference. I don't know. I don't know who I don't else. Know who I would yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that in, in one game someone could make up the type of ground with the type of performance that he's had. And, and he, des- he deserves yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. For he, sure. He wasn't good against us. That doesn't mean he's not the best player this year in our conference, I think. And he'll year. be taking a person because he wasn't good against right. us, and then he's going, he's going to want to. Because we know Kelvin. Kelvin is a hard-nosed coach, mm-hmm. and that loss stung. Yeah. You know, and sometimes those losses are good for you. And then they've, they haven't lost since. And then they, they, they don't, you don't like it when you lose, when you're, you know, no one likes to lose, but they, the way Kelvin coaches, that's a hardcore group and kind of be a massive challenge going down to Houston. And, and uh, for us, we're playing for seeding. That's kind of rare last night or uh, earlier this week when we played K state, usually at the senior speeches, what do they do? Bring out some tables, put all our trophies up because you know, 17 out of 21 yep. years, we won the Big 12 Conference. Mm-hmm. Last night, it just looked weird. And it goes to my next point of how spoiled are we as a fan base? Like, Bill even touched on it uh, after the K-State game. Like, hey, we just won 22 games, chance at 23, plus the tournament, plus the tournament, bigger tournament. You know, we're going to get in the 25 to 28 sure. to 30 range. Yeah. And we, we're looking at it like... It was a massive disappointment. <laughs> massive disappointment. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time, my parents had to round up the whole neighborhood to track me down. It was a mess. A lot of tears. Well, now that we got Xfinity, we have Wi-Fi all over the house, including all my favorite super secret hiding spots. So I can kill time in here by streaming my shows and ha, found ya. The heck? How? You left to find my tablet on. This generation, ruining the game with their performance enhancers. Get wall-to-wall Wi-Fi on the Xfinity 10G network for a reliable connection throughout your home. Now through March 21st, new customers can get started with 200 megabit internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract. And get Wi-Fi equipment included. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless plan auto pay with stored bank account. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply to internet service and Wi-Fi equipment. Actual speeds vary. Xfinity 10G network brings improved speed, security, reliability, and latency. Xfinity 10 gigabit service tier subject to permitting and construction requirements. I was speaking with uh, uh, Jay Williams last night, and you and I were in an event this morning talking about this a little bit. Jay Williams, great broadcaster for ESPN, played at Duke. And, you know, Kansas guy, Duke guy, and we were talking about different ways, different years of how proud we are to be affiliated with Duke or with Kansas, that this is considered a down year. Like, as a Kansan, like, this pisses us off. Like, this isn't right. But 90% of schools in the country would love to be what Kansas is right now. Yeah. You beat Tennessee. You beat Houston. You beat UConn. You win 10 games plus in your own conference. You're ranked 14th in the country. And you're talking about, at worst, being a four seed. How many people would take that resume yeah, right, now? Yeah. right now? Right yeah. now. And the point to this story is Jay and I both are like, that's why it's fun to be affiliated with us. Mm-hmm. We ain't hanging no. If we make the Elite Eight and lose, we ain't hanging a banner. We'll put an NCAA tournament, 2024, whatever. But an Elite Eight loss is a is a disappointment because our goal is a national championship every year. So that's the difference is what it is. It's reality. And uh, it's fun to be affiliated with something like that. Yeah. And it's still uh, within reach for this to be a special, special year um, because of the opportunity that, that we have coming up in March. And then we take a look one year back and we see UConn, the defending national champions, came in as a four seed. Uh, got hot at the right time, and then were able to carry it. They were in four seed last year? Six games in a row. I think they were four seed. 
They were. Um, it had to be the most dominant, dominant. four yeah, teams yeah, yeah. throughout the NCAA yeah, tournament. Yeah, yeah, pretty dominant. I forget, yeah, you're but, right. But it's interesting when you think about you know everything that you just said, and a guy like Hunter Dickinson, the number one player in the portal, comes to Kansas. You don't come here just to win twenty games and to get first team All Conference. Look, he, he's already done that, right? He right. came here to win championships, and so hopefully we'll be able to see. Uh, an even greater resolve and dominance for him, man. And his, his dominance and presence on the defensive end against K-State was certainly what we needed. Five block shots, probably another three or four that were altered. Um, that's, 20 rebounds. That's the, kind of, <laughs> that's the type of dominance that, that, that we need. We don't need him to be good, dominant. I think he's going to start to feel that. And even if it doesn't work out the way he wants to in March, it could be the type of thing that brings him back mm -hmm. because that was the type of expectation not only that the Kansas fan base – uh, and the brotherhood that's, that's blood, sweat, and, sweat, and tears, you know, into this right. program. But it's also the reason why he and others leave good situations at other schools to come to be a part of Kansas basketball. Caught myself last night in the broadcast defending Hunter. Uh, I think our fan base expects more. But when you look at his numbers... He's in 18 points a game, 11 rebounds. 18 and 11. What was your best year? 21 and 11. 21 and 11. Mm -hmm. One of the best years in history. And we're looking at 18 and 11 like, oh, could have been, <laughs> could have been 25 yeah. and 14. Yeah. But every night you can pretty much count on Hunt true. getting you the line. Now, again, I and think. And sometimes it'll surprise you, right? You look at the stat sheet at the end of the game like, wait, what? What? Like, whoa. But, you know, sometimes it probably looks too easy at sometimes for him, right? right. Um, and too easy and not as dominant when you're not, you know, dunking the ball and screaming at people. And, like, it just maybe looks a little bit too easy. Or he catches an easy bunny and finishes it. Or maybe, you know, he missed a few layups uh, against Kansas And, and Hunt would be the first one to say that he could play better. Oh, There's sure. no question. Yeah. He misses easy shots. He hadn't shot the ball well from three in the conference. He he actually shot it well in the non-con. For whatever reason, he struggled in conference, whether that's tired legs or what. But where are we without Hunter? And as much, you know, the the, the last night in the senior speeches, it was it was uh, they talked about Twitter burner accounts and how people got on Nick and people got on Hunt, and they they look at it. Everybody looks at it, and it bothers them, and it definitely affects them. Social media is a, is a fact of life now, but. Again, I, I just don't know where we'd be. Well, well, yeah, and it's appropriate that you said that, where we would be without Hunter, because uh, someone sent me um, a screenshot of the stats that Ernest Uday are putting up right now at TCU. And, again, I, I loved Ernest when he was here. Certainly not a knock on him. Zuby? Um, Zuby not playing much at St. John's, but I think Ernest might be averaging like four points, three rebounds. Yeah, I think Ernest starts, but – he doesn't play a ton of minutes, and he doesn't have a massive impact. Yeah. So he I'll take 18 and 11 up until this point. Yeah, and think uh, about it. If, if our, you know, everybody thinks the grass is always greener, right? Maybe he's having a great experience there. I don't know. I haven't talked to Ernest, but, but wouldn't it be, you know, I know you want to start, but, you're not, you know, look where you'd be. Yeah, I, yeah I, it's tough. I know it baffles me. Now, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. You and I didn't have to experience that because – well, number one, you were a superstar, but like if you don't play very much and you think you are valued more, it's really easy to leave. Yeah. Well, we get the highs and lows and, and, and the do's and don'ts of the portal. And I think everyone is learning that. And I think this is a great case study of, uh, of something that maybe didn't work out uh, the way that, that, um, that, that it was expected to. But we certainly got the better end of the bargain with the numbers that, that Hunter is putting up. And we can certainly... Depend on that moving forward. But, man, how about, how about Kevin getting back in the mix? Yeah. Um, Everybody, uh, so many, speaking of social media, there's experts in their parents' basement with a with a laptop can be whatever they want. Oh, he's disgruntled. He ain't going to play again. Well, I, I mean, got a well, good well, source. Yeah. My cousin's barber's sister said that uh, he isn't going to play. And then what does he do? He guts it out, plays at Baylor, even tweaks his knee a little bit. In the Baylor game, then again at practice the other day, and he toughs it out. And I, I can't say this more clear. He was injured, and now he's better, and he's playing. And he's still injured, but he's playing Correct. through, you know, the pain, the discomfort, uh, and everything. And, and, I, and I think it's important that we talk about this just to give some perspective and maybe to allow people to give a little bit of grace to Kevin McCullough. Um, he loves Kansas, right? right. Came back, 
uh, proven he loves Kansas because he's playing hurt, but this young man does have a future outside of Kansas basketball to think about, that he and his family are fully within their right to consider. He is a NBA, not prospect, a draft pick. He's going to be a draft pick, likely a first-round draft pick. Now, a lot of what he's having to go through mentally in terms of his consideration and decision, in terms of what does he consider medically right now? Do I keep playing? Do I play through the pain? You know, do I rest? Do I get treatment? Do whatever the case, it, it has significant implications to his NBA future. And so think about the, the stress and the strain and the difficulty on a 22-year-old kid that wants to win now for the program that he's endeared to, but yet also needs to be thinking proactively for himself to achieve a dream that he's had since he was a little boy, right? And so, so I'm speaking really strongly about that because, you know, of course, as Kansas fans, Jayhawk Nation, what are we thinking? All we're thinking about is we got to win now, right? What's on the line? What's at stake now? And we care there's, about this more. Yeah, we, we care, care about, about our yeah. players. But we're selfish and we're greedy and we're biased. We think that they should want to play for the name on the front. And, and at sometimes you got to play for the name on the back as far as your future is concerned. To your point, um, he, he loves this place. Kevin loves the University of Kansas. His parents love it. And, and he's gutting through something right now. And if he was, was going to be the third wide receiver picked in the NFL draft, he wouldn't be playing. You know, we saw with the Ohio State guys, once they were out of the college football playoff. Yeah, there, guys out and out. Not playing. Yeah. So give him a ton of credit for gutting it out. It's painful. It's not going to hurt it any worse. But he's playing for his teammates. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there was a, you know, we didn't know whether he was going to be able to go tomorrow or, or earlier this week against K-State. We don't know 100% about Houston. We don't know 100% about Big 12. Yeah. It is truly a day-to-day -day thing. And uh, we just got to have faith in Kevin and, and, and compliment him and respect him when he does come out. Yeah, there for sure. It's got, it's got to be uh, inspiring, you know, in a lot of ways of what he's trying to for, do. For our fan base yeah. and his teammates. But, but then also think about the difficulty of trying to prepare for the toughest part of the schedule in the season, knowing or not knowing whether your best player is going to be on the court. Yeah. That's not easy to prepare for, you know? And it's not Co easy. Coaches are having to prepare for coaches that. Coaches Juan is having teammates. to prepare for that. Right. Hunter is having to prepare for that. Like, every day, every, every game. And you know, Kevin's got to prepare days. for it without practicing. He might practice a little bit, but he's definitely rusty. And so, yeah, not optimal. It never is. Everybody in the country is dealing with injuries. Some more with their star players, some with their less, whatever. It is what it is. We've dealt with it a lot. I mean, you dealt with it in your career. For sure. Unable to play in the Final Four in 03. Yeah. I mean, it, it sucks, and you, you, there's no what ifs. We well, can talk all the what ifs you want, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the Syracuse game, does it? Mm. I mean, it would have if you would have played, but if you're unable to, it just sucks. And that's part of life. It's part of basketball. It's part of sports. So yeah. to reset, we're out here at PXG Kansas City. As you look around this beautiful facility, Wayne and I are here for the Jayhawker podcast. Yeah, and it, and it, you know, it's a month of March. I got my birthday coming up on Saturday, March 9th. I'll be 41. My Zach Clements year because he's number 41. My kid tried to say, hey, dad, it's your Dirk Nowitzki year. No, I, I had to play against oh. him. He hit some shots in my face. I don't necessarily want to call it the Dirk Nowitzki year. I'm going to call it my Zach Clements year, who, oh, by the way, is showing Killing some it. significant improvement. And folks should be excited about what he brings to the table next year. But but to March, there's a promotional a Back to uh, Wayne's birthday. Yeah, yes. let's no, go back to Wayne's no, birthday. There's a promotional opportunity out here. The month of March, like, hey, what does everyone like to do? They like to fill out brackets and turn them in. Hey, here at PXG Kansas City, they have a nice little uh, opportunity, guys, to come out, fill out a bracket, submit it, raffle. And the winner is going to be able to, to receive a nice little KU fan pack. Going to be able to go play around a round of golf with you and I and you know, get get some polos, some quarter zips, some some decals, some different things like that. So hey, for the Jayhawk fans, and you know, if you're gonna probably fill out a bracket, e either either way, do one at work, do one home with your family, come on down to PXG Kansas City, submit that, and then while you're here, try the Black Ops Driver Challenge. They just released a brand new driver in February, Black Ops, and it's actually there's a little competitiveness behind it that if your old driver can outdrive the new black ops version that they actually pay they give you a hundred dollars for that i how tried much, it how close i tried it in the black ops driver 
He's better than my drives, better than my tailor-made sim. Mm. Plus four yards, mm. tighter patterns, more consistent, more fairways hit. I didn't even have my grips on it. Like it still outperformed my preferred club. So I'm not disappointed because I got a Black Ops driver yes. coming my way. Yes, you got one coming. But, but, but hey, come here, test it out. While we're in the competitive mode in March, there's a lot of reasons to come down here to PFG Kansas City. Speaking of golf, Kansas men's and women's are in a bit of a, not a break, but they'll get back on the road here soon yeah. after the women won a week ago. The men took second place in a highly competitive tournament out in Palm Desert with an individual winner. So a lot of, uh, uh, it's definitely pointing up their trajectory. So get excited about following their success. Some other news in the athletic department? Women's basketball. How about the strong finish that they've had winning seven out of their last eight? Um, several of those wins. Eight or nine. Yeah, eight, eight or nine, yeah. Several of those wins coming over top 25 <laughs> opponents. How about you got to finish up senior night against the conference champions, Oklahoma, with a dominant win. Found themselves down 12 early, one plus eight. Samaya Nichols, five-star freshman who, and they've had some 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 postseason was great. conference Awards come out, Samaya Nichols, first team, all freshmen as well. Tiana Jackson, first team, first team all defense as well. Uh, Zakiah Franklin, Holly Kerskeeter, honorable mention. And so they finished on a significant uptick. And, 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 and for the last two games, we're kind of on the bubble, maybe a little outside the bubble. And I'll say it, have solidified 10 toes down. Knocked it in for the big dance in March. You heard it right here, guarantee? Guaranteed, it's in. And they still got work to do in Kansas City. Get ready to start the Big 12 tournament here in Kansas City. And, and a little different, because the it used to be they ran simultaneously, but now the women are, are this week and the men are next week. So get down to T-Mobile Center. Yeah. Check out your Jayhawks and all the Big and 12 that's what teams. The big, that, that's what the split was for prior to that. And I thought it was cool to have them go simultaneously. But, but come on, man. Look, you, you and I both love... Um, municipal yeah. auditorium yeah. Ho hosted more final fours than any place in the country. Right. But the girls, it was time. Yeah, it was time. The girls deserve a place. It's a little, little, little shinier, a little, and how little about, pro style. And how about women's basketball this year? One thing about Kansas basketball, then we talk about Caitlin Clark, which mm -hmm. involves a, mm -hmm. a Kansas great Lynette Woodard. And I was so happy that she was recognized because it's a joke the way they didn't recognize the AIWA or whatever that was. Scott Van Pelt actually did a nice thing on SportsCenter talking about how dumb it is that, I mean, what, 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 it's ridiculous that they don't recognize it. Now, she got recognized. Iowa did the classy thing and had Lynette come to Iowa City for the game that Caitlin Clark was going to break her record. And uh, I thought it was cool. And Lynette's so class act, so classy. Class act. She yeah. said all the right things. Cause we saw another podcast where Cheryl swoops was the opposite of classy and yeah. wasn't informed, but also whether she was informed or not, kind of talked it down. And Lynette Wooder was like, Hey, records are made to be broken. I think it's great what she's doing for women's basketball. Yeah. They're selling out stadiums all over the country, wherever she goes, and other venues as well that she's not even a part of. She's brought a, a, an interest, a massive interest into women's basketball, and it's, it, it's, it's been huge this year. And, and, and I, I just can't think it's cool that, number one, Lynette was recognized, and number two, Lynette handled it the right way, which we all knew she would. But it also helped Kansas because it brought Kansas into the limelight when it's celebrating an Iowa star. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great just to see the, the the buzz around women's basketball as a whole. And then to think that our program can be included in that in large part because of the way uh, the Kansas women's basketball finished the season. And look, it, as we think about the start of the season, what we've seen here this last month and a half from our women's team, this was the team that people expected to see. Yeah. Um, but, you know, had a number one strength of schedule, Difficult start to the season and then found a way to dial it in and to get that. And then, of course, being able to, to highlight and recognize Lynette Woodard uh, for what she'd accomplished there. And so, yeah, it'll be exciting uh, month of March uh, for them. And so get on down to the T-Mobile and make sure you guys uh, check them out as well. On the basketball talk, men's and women's, you ever really dug into Pete Maravich and seen or understood what he did? Like she just passed Pete Maravich as the all-time leading scorer. 
took her, this is kind of my Cheryl Swoops moment, but, <laughs> but not. But Pete Maravich played 83 games. That ain't a lot of games. 83. With no three-point line, right? With no three-point yeah, line. Lynette played with no three-point yeah, line, also, right? Yeah, she yeah. would have 500 more points. Yeah. I don't know, 300? At, at least. At least. At least. Yeah. And Pete Maravich was just telling me. The, the interesting side about Pete Maravich is that all three years, he only played three years because he couldn't play as a freshman, he averaged within like 0. .8 of 43, 43.6, 44.2, 43 43.8 or something like that each year. Think about that. You know how difficult that would be to do that? Uh, yeah. Like just the math of it all, like not a career average of 43, but the exact same amount essentially each year. Yeah, as uh, someone that never scored 40 points, I know how difficult that is. That you is had to have in high ridiculous. school, right? No. Mm -hmm. You never had 40 points never in high school? 40. Nope. Never had 40. Never touched 40. I blame Larry Hogan. <laughs> is it Larry Hogan's uh, fault? No. You never had Larry 40 Hogan's in fault. high school? No, no, never had 40. We had, we had a good group of guys, man. Good group of guys. Spread the love. It Listen was, to him. It was good. It was good. Deflect. We had to talk about his birthday. I tried to bring up. Career, what was your career high? 38? Maybe 38. All right, so you were close. Yeah, it's close. How many state titles? Just one. What was the other guy on your team that was really good? Uh, Nick Sanders. Nick Sanders. Yeah, Lucius Wagner. Some good guys. Good guys going on there, man. Good high school basketball happening on right now. It's fun. Fun yeah. tracking that a little bit. In state championships. So, Got a lot to play for. Got a lot to watch. Best time of the year, March. Uh, Big 12 tournament. The weather forecast looks amazing. Yeah. We're going to be We deserve a good weather week yes. for the Big 12. <laughs> We've been freezing. The last several years in the PL, like we deserve some 40s and 60s. And, and you and I will be at the there. President Hotel just hanging out in the drum room, the Bristol Bar. I kind of post up there and uh, I just love it. As a Kansas City, and it makes you proud of your city. Yeah, it does. Like, you know, growing up, my memories, and I'm sure yours were as well, going to Kemper Arena was fun. You go down there, get a piece of pizza at Cetera's, Gold Knox, you go to that little bar and the bowels of Kemper Arena. It was just back when you could smoke inside. <laughs> and it was just, you'd go on there and be like, oh, just a wall of smoke. You're like, what is going on? And, uh, but so many great memories. But now the, the downtown, which we never ventured downtown at all, unless you lost a bet or something. Now it's great. Yeah, It's fun to hang out down there. I hope they never move it. I think they tried, you know, went to Dallas, went to Oklahoma City, but I think everyone agrees that there's no better setting than Kansas City. Yeah, certainly. And uh, it's it's encouraging to know that the Big 12 term is going to be there uh, for, for for years to come. And it's interesting that when Commissioner Yormark first came to the Big 12 term and became the commissioner, he was not all that convinced right. that Kansas City needed to be the play. He wanted to move to Vegas because he's a big thinker, big entertainment yeah. guy, wants to think outside the box, and rightfully so because that's helped our conference uh, in a lot of ways, but I know that there were a lot of people that were already in the Big 12 office that says, hey, just wait and see Pump the brakes, what yeah. this event's going to be like. Yeah. And I think it's only going to get better, especially with the additional teams that we're adding. And, and then, of course, uh, you know how fun it is when, of course, Kansas is in it and playing well. Iowa State, they're in it. They travel really well. Uh, and so that's... I'm be uh, curious with some of the new teams. You know, we saw the way BYU traveled to Lawrence. Yeah. Which I assume showing. they'll come to Kansas City as well. So I'm kind of excited to see some of these new, you know, who knows about Central Florida or Cincinnati, but Houston and, and BYU at the near top. Obviously, Houston's at the top, but BYU's right there as well. So, and then next year, just adding a whole nother uh, four, four new teams Utah, Colorado, and both the Arizonas is going to be fun just to, you know, I, I like to just sit there and just look around, talk to people. What do you think? It's kind of fun to almost do your own little straw poll survey. What do you guys think of Kansas City? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's fun because a lot of that synergy translates right into the NCAA tournament because we're going to get eight to nine teams in from the Big 12. You and I were just yeah. counting. We think nine. Yeah, yeah, we think, we think nine. And uh, I don't know about you, but... You know, very much like the non-con, I like to cheer and watch Big 12 teams yeah. to see them do well, especially since there's been so much hype and talk about the Big 12 being the best conference in basketball. Well, we bang our chest, ring the bell for the Big 12 being the best in the country. And so, you know, obviously we want to win a national championship every year. We got this on our chest. But when that's not going to happen, we're definitely, I mean, last year, K-State and Texas were in the Elite Eight. And I think probably not publicly but i think privately we're like all right it'd be good for the conference yeah. 
you know, I'd like to see it. it didn't happen, but you want that. I mean, I, I think when you look back at the last five years of college basketball, you look at Texas Tech, national runner-up, you look at COVID year, we were the favorite. Baylor was right there, too. Then Baylor wins it, we win it. And last year was the kind of the first year that we didn't have a Big 12 team in the last five years in the Final Four. And so uh, there's been some naysayers out there. I can't yeah, remember who ACC, said no, the whole ACC they said, oh, making the, a big run. Big 12 yeah, making a big campaign. jobbing the system yeah. or whatever, rigging the system with net and all that. I'm like, all right, well, you can rig it all you want, but the proof's in the pudding, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's something that we – uh, as Kansans and as uh, Big 12 uh, folks that, that we want to hang our hat conference-wise and put our, our, our flag in the ground of being, you know, dominant in the country in, in, a, in a particular sport. Obviously, the SEC and the Big 10 uh, have that type of reputation for football. As much as we think about Big 12 uh, football, we likely aren't going to be able to catch them. And so what is uh, the, the commissioner making a point at doing? It's the basketball brand that we have, and it's only going to get better uh, especially with those other ones. But, but you, you used the word a little bit earlier, and I think it's a great segue into another celebratory moment for Kansas athletes. You use the word pride. Being proud that Kansas City hosts the Big 12 tournament is such an awesome event. We got a lot to be proud of as, as Jayhawks. But how about the pride that we get a chance to feel as Jayhawks and Americans when Stanley Redwine yeah. is announced as the USA track and field team's Head men's coach, coach for the 24 Olympics in Paris. And we all how know that, about that. And we all know how watched track and field is in, in, in the Olympics. I mean, he's going to be center stage for the biggest event. Unbelievable. Of the year. And, it's great. You know, and, and of, Shows course, a lot. Of, of course, you know, Co- Coach Self gets, gets a ton of credit for what he's done in Kansas. Lance just signing his new deal gets a ton of credit what he's done. But Stanley Redwine is the longest tenured yeah. coach in Kansas athletics history, right? Was the assistant uh, USA track and field men's coach in the 2020, did his job, handled his business there, is a national championship coach for our women's program and is now elevated to the pinnacle of uh, coaching and leadership in track and field. And dude, that, 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 just, there's just a lot of pride. Just like, we were, just like we were talking about Lynette Woodard being on TV during the Caitlin Clark deal this summer in Paris, it'll be fun to kind of pound our chest like that's our guy yeah. and that's great honor well-deserved and he's going to represent us well like humble hard worker yeah. pretty quiet um, things you know, right away yeah, yeah. Very, very very unassuming in terms of like if you didn't know him you had a conversation with him, you wouldn't necessarily think he's a head coach right. of a division one powerhouse you wouldn't think oh this guy's the olympic coach but man just does things the right way and i'm so 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 proud of he and his staff and and what they've been able to to accomplish yeah very cool. So a lot to, a lot to look forward to Saturday at Houston for the men, um, and uh, got a chance to shock the world, so to speak. You know, you shock the world. You want to, you want to, want me to shock the world by, by actually. I think golf people ball? would be shocked if you beat this. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, I, I wasn't I saying mean, like he was. This like, isn't like we're not going to arm wrestle. We're going to play golf. I'm I not, thought it was going to be a shock, just like seeing me hit a fairway. Or right. like actually hit the ball cleanly. Not that you know. I'm not pretty, talking about like I'm not there to the point. Pretty where big screen. I, I take you on. I think they, but, they can manipulate the the computer. Well, you know, if these, these PXG new clubs are going to get me right one day. I'm going to be knocking yep. on your door. Like, it's oh, all the good. equipment. It's never. <laughs> it's not operator error. Yeah. It's all <laughs> the equipment. You yeah. Get some nicer shoes. You can dunk. Get some Air Jordans. You got. Yeah, is true. that how it works? Hey, well, let's try it out, man. Let's let's do it. Well, PXG Kansas City. Let's get up and. Uh, have at it. All right, let's give it a round. Let's give it a go. These are my clubs. All right. Okay. Wow. It's pretty good. You guys like that. That's pretty good. Take that, Jack. Pretty good. Let me see this, man. Ah. So ah. Let's, go, let's go there. So I have the 252, 252-yard uh, three-wood. I'll take that. Off, off no warm-up swing, off of just sitting in a chair for a You know a what that's bit. called? Athleticism. Ah. Okay, let me get another one. That's a little shoulder turn. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. Looked pretty stiff, huh? I thought. It looked really stiff. Ah. Okay. Right. With your own club. Oh, that oh, one dribbler. Mm. 
A dribbler. That's in He's the, like a basketball oh, player, right? He hit the Swoken Bridge. Well, you played. He hit the bridge. You played St. Andrews before. I have. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Does it? Is it? That's, nice. Is it nice views from over there? Uh, no. You want to be? I gotta like, get another one, man. I gotta get another one. Try to hit it like here. Those are hotels. Well, that's where that, that's oh, where the water, the restaurant, and the bars over on. That's where I want yeah, to be. Yeah. In, the Dun Vegan. Anyways. It's called yeah. the Dun Vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some room temperature beer ah. at the Dun Vegan. Oh no, thank you. There you go. This will be a little right, maybe. Oh, so nice. It didn't even uh, register. You just hit a guy on a bike. What? I don't know. So nice. It didn't even register. What? You heard the contact. You saw the follow through. That was that was certainly more than certainly should more than enough. Should we try a different club? Huh? Let's try a different club. Wait, okay. We got time. What should we do? Do you want to go first this time? Uh, you got the club in your hand. Oh, okay. Jesus. Okay. You knew that was nice. Seven iron. Mm. That was thin, I think. Or perfect. <laughs> Ooh, jeez. You like that? 195 yards, seven right. iron. Here we That's go. not normal. We might so need a, we're gonna each we might, hit two. We might need a. Uh, oh, oh. Okay. Little pull. Okay. Real nice. Okay. Real nice. Little, my little, little green screen action. <clears throat> Tapping into my Cecil Blyle. Yeah. I don't, I don't think anyone will confuse you with <laughs> Cecil Blyle. Is that, is that because <laughs> Cecil's 5'6"? Uh huh. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's several others. Okay. There we go. There we go. Not bad. Yeah, 130. Not that's yep. good for a... It's great. 90-year-old. Uh-huh. Easy. Hey. Easy. That's all uh, I got. <laughs> hey, well, the month of March, come on out to the PXG Kansas City. Got the Black Ops Driver Challenge you can participate in. Go head for head uh, with that. Compete to win $100. See if you can beat the Black Ops Challenge. And of course, it's March. You're going to be filling out a bracket anyway. Come on down to 119th at Metcalf. Do their bracket challenge. An opportunity to win. Awesome KU fan pack filled with great KU golf gear. And win an opportunity to play some golf with Greg and I. This has been the J. Archer Podcast brought to you by the University of Kansas Health System, Xfinity. Black and Veach, let's go get them in Kansas City. Women's Big 12 Tournament, men in Houston. And we'll see you next week in Kansas City as well for the Big 12 Tournament. Rock Chalk.